Hi everyone, so in this video we'll be going through pKa in quantitative analysis. Just to recap on what acids and bases are, so remember that there are two particular definitions for them that we need to remember. So an Arrhenius acid is one that dissociates to produce a hydrogen ion or hydrogen ions in water, while bases are ones that dissociate to produce hydroxide ions in water. This is a little bit different from the Bronsted-Lowry acid base theory where acids are described to be proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. So in the context of Arrhenius dissociation and ionization, they are going to be the same process. However, dissociation acts actually separation of H+, whereas ionization is production of H+, and conjugate base ions. The so last point of recap was differentiating between what a strong and weak acid or base was. So the strength of an acid is the degree of ionization, so it's how much it ionizes or dissociates in solution. And if we compare acids on the top and on the bottom, we should expect that the top one is hydrochloric acid because it fully deprotonates or dissociates. And the bottom one is acetic acid, which only partially dissociates or deprotonates. If you're confused by the diagram, the white circle is going to represent the hydrogen ion, whereas the blue circle is going to indicate the formed anion. So in the case of hydrochloric acid, this is going to be Cl minus, this is H plus, and for acetic acid, this is H plus, and this is the acetate ion. Ka, this is the acid's dissociation constant. It's the KEQ of the acid's dissociation. And we know that KEQ is given by the particular formula products over reactants. This is no different. Ka, the acid dissociation constant, is going to be the products over the reactant. And what Ka really does for us is it's just an indicator of the acid's strength. So the, if the acid is going to be really strong, then we should expect that there are going to be no longer any reactants and it's used up all the products meaning technically we should get an infinitely large Ka for strong acids. And similarly, if the Ka is smaller, that means that it's a weaker acid because we have less of these products over the reactants. Thinking about our formula again for Ka, it's given us products over reactants, so Ka is an indicator of the acid's strength. If the acid is strong, then it should ionize more to produce more hydrogen ions. And we should expect that there are no longer going to be any reactants, which means that we are going to get an infinitely large Ka for a strong acid. Similarly, if the Ka is getting smaller, then we are getting a weaker acid because there's less of the reactant being turned into ions. So pKa is the negative log of Ka. While Ka is an indicator of the weak acid strength, pKa is also an indicator of the acid strength. However, since we can have exceptionally large or small Ka values, we want to be using pKa to help better quantify these very small differences in Ka. So a strong acid is going to have a lower pKa value, and strong acids will have negative pKa values. So strong acid has larger Ka values and smaller pKa values, over here, pretty much what we have are just some Ka and pKa values for common weak acids like hydrofluoric acid, methanoic acid, acetic acid, and hydrogen sulfide. We can see that the larger the pKa is, actually the weaker the acid is going to be. And so this table shows us the inverse relationship between increasing strength and decreasing pKa. For this question, the hydrogen ion concentration, H+, of a 0.25 mole per liter solution of hydrofluoric acid, HF, is 0.0180 moles per liter. Calculate the value of the acid dissociation constant, Ka, for HF. So let's start off by writing the dissociation equation for HF. Remembering that it's a weak acid, it is going to be in equilibrium to form the H plus hydrogen ion and also the fluoride ion, which is the conjugate base. 
Since the hydrogen ion concentration is 0 0.018 and the fluoride ion is in a one-to-one -one ratio, we know that the fluoride ion must also have 0 0.0180 moles. The remaining amount of HF is going to be 0 0.25 minus the amount of HF which has dissociated, which is 0 0.0180. The Ka expression is going to be given as H plus, which is our products, and F minus over our reactants, which is HF. And if we substitute each of these numbers into this formula, we end up getting 0 0.0180 squared all over 0 0.25 minus 0 0.018 and we get a value of 1.40 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is going to be in three significant figures. For this next question, it says 0 0.75 moles per liter of a weak monoprotic acid has a pH of 2.47. Calculate the value of its acid dissociation constant Ka. So the generic acid is going to be given as HA, which is going to then dissociate as a weak acid into H plus and A minus. We know that we had an initial concentration of 0 0.75, and that dissociated into H plus and A minus. We can work out the concentration of H plus by using the pH. So H plus concentration is 10 to the power of the negative pH, which equals to 10 to the power of negative 2.47. And that is going to give us a value of 0 0.00339. Again, since we know that the H plus and the A minus is in a one-to-one -one ratio, the concentration of A minus is also going to be 0 0.00339. So the concentration of HA initially is 0 0.750. However, we are losing, assuming that there's one liter, an equivalent of 0 0.00339 moles per liter. We can then work out using these values what our Ka is. This is going to be equal to, again, our products. over our reactant. And that is going to give us a value of 1.54 times 10 to the minus 5. Let's look at this scenario where pH is equal to pKa. When pH is equal to pKa, we take the formula, H plus must be equal to Ka. If H plus is equal to Ka, then we can cancel these two out in the equation. And therefore, CHCOO, which is the conjugate base, over the acid must be equal to 1, which means that the ratio of acid to conjugate base must be 1 to 1. So pKa is when a solution of weak acid is exactly 50% ionized. 50% ionization is where we have acid concentration being equal to conjugate base concentration. So this was the example that we previously used in a slide before. So pKa provides us with information of an acid strength, which we've said earlier, and it's the pH particularly where the weak acid is 50% ionized. So the pKa of acetic acid is 4.77, meaning that 50% is ionized at the pH of 4.77. Considering that the pH of 4.77 as being the point of 50% ionization, what we can infer from this is that when the pH is less than 4.77, actually the H plus concentration is higher, meaning the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. This is because it's in equilibrium as per the Le Chatelier's principle. Similarly, when the pH is greater than 4.77, we know that the H plus concentration is lower and the equilibrium is going to shift to the right as per the Le Chatelier's principle. So the degree of ionization 
which is the strength of an acid or a base, is actually going to be affected by the concentration of acids or bases in dilution. The idea is that dilution is going to decrease the number of ions because you're increasing the volume, but the number of ions in the solution is going to be a relatively lower ratio. However, if we think about this actually, Lechetelier's principle says that an equilibrium position will shift to the right if we introduce water. So the introduction of water will actually shift the reaction to the right hand side, which means that we are going to increase the number of ions which are in that solution. So actually, the degree of ionization is going to increase when we dilute a solution. The degree of ionization is affected by concentration of acid base and dilution. pKa and Ka, however, are unaffected by concentration of acids and dilutions, but they are affected by temperature change, and this is important to know. So it's better to use Ka or pKa as a measure of acid strength because the degree of ionization is affected by the concentration and dilution of the acid and base. The same rule is going to apply for pKb and Kb. So this question gives us the pKa of a particular acid, acetic acid, and it tells us that it is 4.77. The question is asking us to calculate the pH of a 2 mole per litre solution of acetic acid when it reaches an equilibrium. So we know that pKa is the negative log of Ka. So what we can do is now we can work out what Ka is, which is going to be 10 to the negative pKa and 10 to the negative 4.77 is going to give us a value of 1.698 times 10 to the negative 5. Once we've done this, we are able to work out what the H plus concentration is by using the Ka expression. So for this particular example where the acetic acid is going to be in equilibrium in solution, it's given by the particular formula CH3COH is in equilibrium with H plus. We'll just put all of these in aqueous for now. Plus the acetate ion CH3COO minus. If we're looking at this doing the ice table, We have initial amount of 2 moles per, per litre. We have 0 hydrogen ions and 0 acetate in the beginning. We have an X amount loss for the reactant and an X amount gain for the products. This means that in the end, we have a 2 minus X amount of CH3COOH, an X amount of H+, and an X amount of acetate. So writing out our Ka expression, that is going to be equal to H plus multiplied by CH3 COO minus all over CH3 COOH. And so if we take these values of the concentrations at the equilibrium and substitute them into the Ka expression, what we end up getting is that Ka is equal to X times X all over 2 minus X. And that's going to be x squared divided by 2 minus x. However, because the Ka value is rather small, this means that relative to the number 2, the value of x is going to be rather small. It's going to be close to 0, and so we can actually remove this from our equation. From here, now we have that the Ka is equal to x squared over 2 which equals to, remembering our value earlier, 1.698 times 10 to the negative 5. And that means that x is going to be equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by 1.698 times 10 to the negative 5. And that will give us a value of 5.83 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, what is x? Well, if we look at the equation, X is going to actually be our H plus concentration, our hydrogen ion concentration. And so we can use this concentration now, sub this into the negative log base 10 in order to get our pH value. So pH is going to be equal to the negative log of X. And that will give us a value of 2.235. 
And this is actually going to be given as three decimal places, remembering that significant figures turn into decimal places when calculating pH. So the degree of ionization is affected by the concentration of an acid base and dilution, but Ka and pKa are unaffected by concentration of acid and dilution, although both of these measures are affected by temperature changes, because if we remember, a change in concentration and dilution is not going to change the position of the equilibrium, only temperature. Therefore, Ka and pKa are going to be better measures of acid strength, and the same rules are going to apply for bases with their Kb and pKb values, which we will talk about in a moment. Recapping on what an Arrhenius base is, it is one that will dissociate or ionize to form the OH- ions, which is opposite to the formation of the H plus ion for the Arrhenius acid. So Bronsted-Lowry acid is different in that there is no dissociation. It's simply a species which accepts a proton and ionizes to produce OH- ions and conjugate acid ions. A Bronsted-Lowry base is different to a Bronsted-Lowry acid as they do not dissociate, they only ionize to produce an OH- ion and the conjugate acid ion. In the context of Arrhenius acid and base, remember that dissociation and ionization mean the same thing, but not for a Bronsted-Lowry reaction. Strong and weak bases apply similar definitions to strong and weak acids, so the strength of the acid is going to be dependent generally on how much it dissociates or ionizes. Sodium hydroxide, we call that a strong base because it's going to completely dissociate or ionize, and whereas Whereas ammonia is a weak base because it only partially ionizes or dissociates. It's important also we know what Kb itself. So Kb is the weak base's dissociation constant, much like how Ka was the acid's dissociation constant. And in the same way, Kb is going to reveal the ratio of ions to unionized base. Kb overall is an indicator of a weak base strength, much like Ka. So we have stronger bases ionizing more to produce more OH ions, ions, meaning that a Kb for a strong base is going to be large, just like how the Ka for a strong acid is also a large value. So Ka and Kb have a particular relationship between them. If we look at them, the Ka is given as this formula, and the Kb is given as this formula, both of them being the products over the reactants. However, when we multiply them together, we can see that these top and bottom parts are going to cancel each other out, meaning that Ka times Kb is going to be equal to the H3O concentration times the OH minus concentration. And we know that Ka times Kb is equal to Kw because we know that this is the Kw expression, which is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees. We can derive the self-ionization of water to work out what the relationship between pKa and pKb are with one another. So we start with Ka times Kb equals to 10 to the negative 14. And we know that because Ka times Kb in the previous slide is equal to Kw. If we take the log of both sides, the log of Ka times Kb is equal using our log laws to log of Ka plus the log of Kb. And the log of 10 to the negative 14 is simply just going to be negative 14. Then we can take the negative of this entire equation the negative log of Ka minus the log of Kb equals to 14. We know that the negative log of Ka equals to the pKa. We know that the negative log of Kb equals to the pKb. So that means that pKa plus pKb is going to equal to 14 when it's 25 degrees Celsius. Looking at pKa and pKb versus pH and pOH, we already know that pOH and pH are not fantastic measures of acid base strength. Because factors such as the degree of ionization and the concentration can skew their results. However, Ka and Kb are better measurements because they are only affected by temperature changes. pKa and pKb themselves are even better measures of these acid base strengths because the sensitivity of the logarithm to small changes in concentration is much higher.